Now let us see the features of the atypical cervical vertebrae that is C1, C2 and C7. So this is the first cervical vertebra also called as atlas and this is the second cervical vertebra which is also called as axis. So first let us see the features of atlas. As you can see here atlas is a ring shaped cervical vertebra. As you can see as present in most of the other vertebrae C1 vertebra does not have a body. So what happens is during development the detached body or the centrum of the atlas vertebra goes and fuses with the superior surface of the centrum or the body of axis and this attached part is forming the odontoid process or the dense. So the odontoid process or dense of C2 represents the detached centrum of atlas. What are the parts of atlas? Atlas consists of a small or a short anterior arch and a long curved posterior arch and on either side there are two large masses they are called as the lateral masses of atlas. What are the features of the anterior arch? On the anterior surface of the arch, anterior arch, there is a tubercle. So this is the tubercle on the anterior arch of the atlas. On the posterior arch, what you can see is there is no spinous process instead there is a very small rudimentary spine which is also called as the posterior tubercle. So on the anterior arch we have an anterior tubercle on the posterior arch we have a posterior tubercle. What are the structures attached to the anterior arch? On the superior aspect of the anterior arch we have a membrane which is called as the anterior atlanto occipital membrane which is attached to the foramen magnum. Whereas on the inferior border of the anterior arch, we have the attachment of the atlanto-axial membrane. On the posterior surface of the anterior arch, we are able to see a facet. This articulates with the odontoid process. So there is a corresponding facet on the anterior surface of the odontoid process. So this articulation forms the median atlanto-axial joint which is a pivot joint along which the no movement of the head happens. What are the features of the posterior arch? So behind the lateral mass we have a deep groove present on the posterior arch. This deep groove transmits the third part of vertebral artery into the vertebral canal and the first cervical spinal nerve out of the vertebral canal. The nerve will be present closer to the bone than the artery that is the first cervical spinal nerve will be sandwiched between the third part of vertebral artery above and the posterior arch of the atlas below. On all the other parts of the superior border that is excluding the part which is related to the vertebral artery and the nerve the posterior arch gives attachment to posterior atlanto occipital membrane. Now let us see the features of the lateral mass of atlas. So as you can see here lateral mass is a large mass which bears a superior articular facet as well as an inferior articular facet. So as you can see here the superior articular facet is large, is concave, is deeply concave and it is kidney shaped. This is for articulation with the facet present on the occipital condyles. So this articulates with the occipital condyles to form the atlanto-occipital joint along which the yes movement of the head happens. As you can see here the inferior articular facet of the lateral mass is smaller and it is almost plain or flat. This articulates with the superior articular facet of the axis to form the lateral atlanto-axial joint. So, there are three joints between the atlas and axis. The one median atlanto-axial joint happens between the anterior arch and the odontoid process and two lateral atlanto-axial joints happens between the lateral masses of atlas and the superior articular facet of axis. Now, on the inner surface of the lateral masses, we can see two tubercles. 
These tubercles are interconnected by a ligament called as the transverse ligament of the odontoid process or the transverse ligament of dense. So, when the median atlanto-axial joint happens between the anterior arch and odontoid process, there is a ligament that passes behind the dents connecting the two tubercles of the lateral masses. This ligament prevents backward dislocation of the odontoid process thereby protecting the important contents in the vertebral canal namely the medulla oblongata and the cervical spinal cord. Now let us see the features of the transverse process of atlas. As you can see here, compared to the transverse process of the cervical typical vertebrae, the transverse process is longer in case of atlas and it does not have all the parts that were described in the case of typical cervical vertebra. The anterior tubercle is represented by a rudimentary tubercle present on the lateral mass. This is the posterior tubercle. This is the posterior root and this is the anterior root. This is the foramen transverse area and it transmits the second part of vertebral artery with the sympathetic plexus and vertebral vein. The second part of vertebral artery emerges out of the foramen transverse area. It winds behind the lateral mass and here it appears within the suboccipital triangle and in this groove you will call it the third part of vertebral artery which then enters the vertebral canal as I have already explained. So this completes the features of atlas. Now let us move on to the other features of axis which I have not explained. So again to revise. This is the odontoid process or dense that represents the detached centrum of the atlas which is connected to the body below. This is the superior articular facets that articulates with the lateral mass of atlas to form the lateral atlanto axial joint. These are the two laminae that meet in the midline posteriorly. Attached to it posteriorly is a huge bifid spine. So in comparison with the cervical typical vertebrae, this is larger and is bifid and it gives attachment to ligamentum nuque. So what is to note about the articular facets of axis is that the superior articular facet is placed more anterior than the inferior articular facets. The superior articular facet is more flat because it has to articulate with the flat inferior facet of the lateral mass of atlas whereas the inferior articular facet is directed forwards. This articulates with the superior articular facet of C3 which is present inferiorly. You can see that the superior articular facet is large and it overhangs the foramen transverse area and so the foramen transverse area is present below the superior facet and is more oblique or more horizontal. Again it transmits the second part of vertebral artery with the nerves and veins. The transverse process of axis is more pointed and is directed posterolaterally. So this completes the features of atlas and axis. Now we will go to the features of the next atypical cervical vertebra that is C7. So this is the C7 vertebra. This vertebra is also called as vertebra prominence. The reason for this is the long prominent projection of the spine which can be palpated in the lower part of the neck and it gives attachment to the lowest end of ligamentum nuque. In other features if we compare this is the body of the C7 vertebra which is a little larger than the other typical cervical vertebrae and it is more similar to the first thoracic vertebra. This is the large vertebral canal or the vertebral foramen that accommodates the cervical enlargement of the spinal cord. We can see the foramen transverse area present here in the transverse process. What is to notice that many C7 vertebrae may contain, here you can see it's a partially divided foramen transverse area. Sometimes it may be completely doubled or sometimes triple or multiple. In some cases the C7 vertebra may not contain a foramen transverse area. The foramen transverse area of the C7 vertebra does not transmit vertebral artery, instead it transmits only vertebral veins. The C7 cervical vertebra sometimes may contain a projection that is the costal element of the C7 cervical vertebra may sometimes be extended as cervical rib 
which may be cartilaginous or fibrous in some cases. In this case, we can see a bony spicule. So, this represents the cervical rib.